So we're going to try to do a quick video about what it is we're looking for in life. Uh, uh, here's my friend Saeed. Uh, and he's a, basically a Sufi Muslim, is that uh, basically I'm it? not Sufi, I'm, uh, I, I always say I'm, I'm Muslim, only I'm Muslim, you know. Sure. I don't want to say Sufi, Sunni, Salafi, anything. Sure. I think the only reason I was pointing that out, because people don't know, Sufi usually means focusing on the spiritual uh, side yes, of things. Uh, that's what I try to do, you know. Yeah. I read their books and they focus on, they, they tell you remember God. Worship God. That's the main, they tell you that's the main thing in religion. Sure. Worship God. Remember God. Do dhikr. That's it. Cool. So that's going to be pretty much what we're going to be talking about. What are we searching for life? So the first question to get people contemplating a little bit because we've been brainwashed so much with advertising and the advertising keeps telling us we need to buy more stuff and then we'll be happy. Yes, yes. And so if we keep hearing that, we start believing in that. Yes. Uh, so the, a good question to start off the thinking process is... Uh, if we need very little to be happy, I mean, sorry, if we need very little to exist and things like this, you know, we need very little food. In fact, having less food actually makes us more healthy. Then why is it so difficult to be happy? Why do you think people find it so difficult to be happy if our needs are so small? Uh, because uh, people th think happiness lies in, lies in money or material things. Good home, good car, good job, lots of money. Happiness doesn't doesn't lie there. It's not there. Wise people throughout uh, history been telling people always happiness is in faith and belief. Happiness happiness is in God. Cool. And then we can particularly test remembering him. You know. Cool. And we can test this idea. So Saeed is saying what I'm going to say, basically talk about next, which is there's a simple solution to our unhappiness which is to directly go for the thing that makes us happy rather than going to a million different directions of course, of course. and a simple thing is the Quran gives you a test yes. and it says it is in the remembrance of God that hearts can find comfort of course, yes. okay so if anybody's interested I'll put all the links and references uh, to the verse of the Quran I'm talking about in the video in the comments but anyway so that's a test so we can test it in different ways one is that we can test it on ourselves right now we can spend five ten seconds suddenly just thinking about god and see if your worries start just disappearing yeah yeah, yeah. um what do you think about that uh i try to do it all the time i try to do it all the time and i've uh, i know i know it 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 it, hap it happens, you know. So it works for you. That's I lived good. it. I lived it. it. Yeah, it works for me. And I live it as well. Like if yeah. I think about my favorite thing to do here is just to pray here. Like yes. in the cross, yes. that is such an amazing feeling. Yes. So I think people should try that out. You know, you know, people who 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 live to do this, sometimes they they test themselves. They begin in remembering Allah in a quiet place, but that that's become like a kind of easy, you know. So what they do later is they try to test themselves and go to a very, very noisy place like this and try to and see if they could do it there. Remember that's interesting. There, yeah. yeah, and that's really interesting yeah. point because like I find it very easy like to block like everybody off. Oh, yeah, this is what I I'm find it easy about. without trying because I find it no, no. my my I know, I know, my experience of God know, is but, so much. But you know, people who do this are not the same. There, there are people who have been doing it for a long time and become it's become yeah they manage to do it. So this is you have to get to that stage where you could be here and block it. And you know, Sufis would tell you that if you do this properly, mm. eventually the whole earth will be mosque for you, mosque a place of remembering God. So the mosque and the market will be the same. You will be inside the same, in contact with God. That's good. Uh, beautiful. Um, and so, so I come here to test myself, you know, <laughs> try to do it here. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people very angry and frustrated here, yeah, yeah. and it's good to be able to have inner peace at all times. That's another aspect, you know, yeah. where you, you see here a lot of, uh, actually there is a lot of violence here, mm. and hatred, and provocation. Also, you need that aspect as a seeker, you need to work on that aspect about you, where you become patient, and you don't react and you let things happen, you know. 
Yes, so this Don't word. Let it affect you, you know. Yes, so this idea of patience or sabr in Arabic, which is a very important part of spirituality. Um, and then there's. Uh, you can test, you can do the sort of 10 second test, which is just see if remembering God makes you happier. Then there's a longer test, which is if you live, you can try two different ways of living your life. You can live your life chasing materialism and you will find in your own feelings and experience that you're just becoming more and more miserable. And so most people don't reflect on this or test their feelings. And the alternative is to work towards living your life towards God yes. or it, so and then you can see when you live your life for God you suddenly find yourself a lot more peaceful yes. and you can see that in the West as well yes. you can see in the West people are chasing more and more material things yes. and depression is going up even though they have so many material yes. things whereas in so many poor countries where they focus on God, they're just really happy. Like you see them smiling all the time. What yes, do you think about that? Yes, yes. I think um, m if we talk about Muslims who, who, who believe in God, I think, yes, they are happy, but I think they could do more, you know. They could do more because they have a lot of mistakes, obviously, but they, they need to do more. If you, if you look at the Quran, the Quran always say, establish prayer and basica, give money, help the poor. So you cannot, there is a co connection there between the Salah and the Zakah. You cannot do Salah unless you do Zakah. You know why? Because when you give away your money, now you have nothing to be distract, to distract you. Nothing. Now you could do the Salah. Because yes. you're, whatever, let's say I have a TV at home. I give it to someone. Now I have time to do Salah. Let's say I have a lot of clothes. Every time it takes me a lot of time which one to wear, you know. But if I give most of them to... Now I don't have anything to think about. Now I, focus, I can focus on Salah. I knew it would be interesting talking to Sayyid because he's going to all sorts of different yeah, spiritual yeah. things. It's like, all connected. Yeah, it's all connected. Yeah. Like when you give your money away, yeah. it sort of, sort of purifies your wealth because, can, you, become, exactly. because exactly. you become less dependent exactly. on it. And you become, say, so I can give it away and I'm yeah. still happy. Oh, yeah. I would you know? like to note here uh, about paying your money because Muslims think if I pay some of my money I will get more. That's not the point. The point is you give your money so now you can you can have the freedom and the time to do salah properly. Now you don't have distractions. For example, Allah would say to you if you have a shop and you work in that shop in trade, you do little salah. Allah wants you to do more Salah. So if you give away that shop, now you have all the time to do the Salah. And that's better for you. Okay. But I do that's think there should be, I would just say, you should have balance. So don't give away I your shop in one know, go. Know, but know, balance know. for different people at different spiritual levels are different. I, I, so, I, yeah, that's exactly. exactly. So your balance... I to say that. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, this so, is, what I'm saying is not for beginners, by the yes, way. Yes. <laughs> very, very accurate. I love yeah, this. Yeah, I love yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So then... Uh, but what can I do? I have to say th my, what's on my mind, you know. I don't <laughs> yeah, 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 that's good. Okay. Um, and then, so the next sort of level of testing of the fact that God is really what we're looking for yeah. is that you will see that God is the only antidote or the only solution to your material problems. A bit like what we're already talking about. So, for example, because I like to talk about psychology. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because people, I'm talking to people who are not spiritual, yeah, yeah. people who are from the West who don't believe this. Yeah. So they believe in science, they believe in psychology. Yeah. And so, I don't know, many, not many people know, but I heard somebody called Jordan Peterson. You know Jordan Peterson? I, I see him on YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. So Jordan Peterson, he said, he's a psychologist, and he said, the only sure way or reliable way to get off addiction, you know, to drugs and alcohol, is spiritual change. Yeah. So these, this is... He's talking about scientific evidence. Yeah, yeah. This is, and so if you've heard of uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, have you ever heard of them? Uh, yeah, I heard. Yeah. yeah? I heard. So they, they, their guide to getting off addiction to alcohol yes, yeah. is very spiritual. They talk uh, about God. Uh, they said you can only um, stop yourself from being an addict if yeah, you yeah. believe that God will help you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and yeah, other yeah. spiritual things like you can only stay off addiction yeah, if you yeah. help somebody else yeah, stop. Yeah, These yeah. are all Islamic teachings, yes, yes, you know. Yes, yeah. So you can see the power 
of God. Yes, yes. This this is like the second. This is another level of testing. You can do the immediate testing, but you can also it's it's sort of proof in the pudding testing. You know, like there's the proof in the pudding, like from the experience or the effect oh, yeah. of believing in God. So the effect of believing in God gives you so much inner peace that it stops you from being an addict yeah. addict to materialism yeah, because yeah. Drug, ad drug addiction is just materialistic yeah. addiction, yeah. right? Yeah. So there's that. There's all sorts of body image problems. Now, you know people are suffering from anorexia. They're not happy with their bodies, yeah. you know? I don't want to go into the whole trans movement How thing. How they look generally yeah. to people in the society, yeah. you know? And teenagers feel suicidal. That, that's kind of worship, you know? The Self-worship. Yeah, society worship. Yeah. Because if you care about what people think about you, it's like you, you, you give them a, a God status, you know? you know? Exactly. And so... So, did you know that if you're religious, as this is especially for women who are more affected by body image, because that's how Allah's designed yeah, biologic yeah, yeah. people. That's a but, test anyway, right? where that we need to come from, you right. know. But did you know that religious women, even if they're not Muslim, women, if they're Muslim, Christian, they Jewish, women, they, they have better... Yes, so if they focus on God, yeah, yeah. And then because of that, they dress modestly, they have less body image issues. So that means they suffer less mental health problems because of this belief in God, which affects their behavior. Yes. So instead of wearing no clothes or hardly any clothes, they wear more clothes because they don't feel that's the most important thing. The most important thing is God. Yes. And then they find peace. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, okay. of course. Okay, and then... The next stage, uh, which is going to be, I'm going to refer to another verse of the Holy Quran. Uh, did you know that nature, this is again according to psychologists, so the last thing I said about body image issues, again that's psychology, okay, by non-religious people, they, they prove that believing in God gives you less body image issues, but the next thing also is nature is the most powerful antidepressant. Yes. This yes, is yes. so it's better than any drugs and this is what the psychologists say. This is science again. But you might say what has nature got to do with God? Because maybe you, people cannot connect it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think is the connection between nature and God? I think uh, nature is very important. It's very important. It's I think maybe it's, it's the way God wants to communicate with us through nature. But, uh, but what we so when I mean by nature, I'm talking about the leaves, the trees, yeah, yeah, not yeah, inner yeah. nature, also that's important, yeah, yeah. but outer nature like yeah, the yeah. trees and yeah, wildlife. That, that's why we, we sometimes need to, to take time off and go and experience nature. We leave all the technology we have at home, or we leave the cars and we try to live naturally. I think the, the closer we will be to nature, the happier. Okay, so uh, tell me, because you're, I, I know you like spirituality and uh, reflecting on the verse of the Holy Quran, have you ever heard of the verse of the Holy Quran that describes the universe as a glass palace under which water rushes through? You mean Jannah? No, so this is uh, the story of uh, Queen of Sheba and Solomon. Have you heard of this story? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. people don't necessarily reflect. They think that this is just a random story in the yeah. Quran. But I'll give a reference to it. And this is the idea behind it. Why, what God has got to do with nature. So basically, Solomon, uh, which I believe is a prophet, uh, he was basically trying to uh, convince the Queen of Sheba, who was very materialistic at the time, oh. He was trying to convince her, him that uh, her, sorry, the the power and beauty of God. Yes. He said basically the universe mm. is like a glass palace, okay. right? Yeah. And then under which the power of God, or fast, mm. the power of God is running. Yeah. So when, so the like, I want to kind of maybe let me explain it this way. Why is it? What's the magical force that makes us look at a tree yeah. or a leaf? Yeah. And that suddenly gives us peace. What it is, the Quran is trying to tell us, is that when we look at 
the tree, we're not really, we think we're looking at the tree, but we're actually looking at the power of God. That is what the true beauty that attracts us. So these are getting more and more subtle, but if we understand them, they're more and more powerful ways of... What do you think about this description from the Quran? It's it's accurate, it's accurate, it's, uh, it's accurate. It's everywhere around us, you know. But the, the question here is, who could do it? Who could see the power of God through these things? Well, the good news is, yeah, is that even if you don't, even if you don't, if even if you're not spiritual, the psychologists say you can just be around yeah, yeah. trees and you'll feel more peaceful. Yes. You'll have I less know, depression. Yeah, yeah, but you're right. If you know that this is because of God, you're going to have a better effect. Of course, of yeah. course, of course. Okay, and so I'm, I'm not gonna, I haven't finished yeah, yet, but yeah. give me a little bit of time, yeah, yeah, yeah. just uh, maybe two minutes, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's yeah. almost done, because I'm gonna read a bit of poetry, yeah, sure, just sure, to write, sure, wind up, sure. so just to wind up, there's, I'm gonna talk about three things, very quickly, that we we look for, but actually there we're actually find, looking for God. We we ah, we try yes, to find yes. God in different things, and we find that it's not there. So one is we fall in love with a spouse, you know, your husband or wife. Yes, yes, yes. Why do we, when we fall in love with an ordinary mortal, a nor, like an ordinary woman, yeah. we try to imagine that she's going to change our lives, yeah. right? That means we're trying to give her God status. Oh uh, yes, yes. And why yeah. would we do that? Because yeah. actually we're in, because we're actually in search for God yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're trying to find find God in different things. Yes, that's yes. why we why we miss yeah. what, that's what we're missing and that's why we find happiness so difficult because we keep trying to look everywhere except yeah. God. Yes. So that's one. Yes. The same is with children. You know, we find very you know obviously it's natural if your child dies for example you feel sad. You don't just say oh that's not just another child yes. Yes. but but what is the the truth behind our attachment to the children yeah, is yeah. the psychologists again they've done a test yeah. they said if we think about our death then we feel like more having more children yes, yes, yes. they did a test so what does that mean it means that we again are trying to find God through our children because we want to live eternally yes, yes. we're trying to live forever through our children this is what psychologists yes, yes, have realized yes, 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 okay yes. and uh, one more yes. music yeah, yeah. okay why do we feel elated why do we feel high with certain music yeah, yeah. again we're looking for the most beautiful, the most high, yes, yes. through the music, yes. and then, so these are all indications of our search for God. So I'm just going to read one bit of poetry, yes. and that'll be, then you make your comment, and that'll be d yes. done. So yes. so here's a commentary based on a, uh, a book called The Philosophy of the Teachings of Islam. Again, I'll give the reference, it's a free book, okay. Of the natural conditions of human beings, is their search for a high and beautiful being towards who they have a inherent or natural attraction. The same attraction comes into play when a person feels love for another. It is the reflection of the attraction that is inherent in our nature towards God as if we are in search for something that we miss, the name of which we have forgotten and which we seek to find in one thing or another, which we take up from time to time. A person's love of wealth or our children or our wife or our soul being attracted towards a mu musical voice are all indications of our search for the true beloved. Yes. Any thoughts? Uh, very good, very good. I agree with that. I agree with that. Thank you so much, Said. I appreciate welcome. your time. You're Thank you.